update button. <laughs> <laughs> are you actually are you actually updating here in real time? Because someone in the comments I, actually literally said that you were doing that. It's spinning. It's checking for updates. I'm looking at it now. <laughs> <laughs> How do we know? So making, oh my god! Now I'm getting some kind of horrible feedback loop. Oh. I can't stop laughing. You know, oh, I'm oh. laughing at you laughing, and you're laughing at me laughing. <laughs> It, uh, I actually updated last night to. Um, oh, well, maybe the, that's uh, why your recording is still going. Yeah. Oh, what? Is it still going? The recording? Yeah. No. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it is still going. Yeah. That's a miracle. Okay. Just so everyone knows, the reason I always ask Leander that is because he starts his audio recording, which I need. Critical component <laughs> for the audio podcast is the audio com component. And inevitably, six to seven minutes into the show, all of a sudden, Leander's recording just stops and of course he doesn't know so we get to the end of the show no, 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 it's like it's like six seconds six seconds of, of static it was weird because the same time it was did the same thing the time before it did it happens twice now and it was just six seconds it yes was like contact that movie contact you know yeah uh <laughs> wait you mean of that little broadcast from space uh well with jodie foster jodie foster right yeah at the very end you know they say they, they didn't they, 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 oh, they, they okay. were supposed to record the whole thing yeah and, you know, like to all the outside observers, it looked like the capsule just dropped straight through and nothing happened. But then they well, afterwards. Spoiler alert. Was, Holy moly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Should I keep it quiet? I don't know. This movie is like 20 years old now, right? Yeah. But you know me. I, I never spoil movies, period. I don't care how long okay, they've all right. been out. Spoiler alert. Oh, man. That movie, that, that scene is one of my favorite movie scenes of all time. I think saw, we're great, talking about contact, movie. by the way, in case anyone missed yeah. that. Great movie. One of my favorites. Oh, yeah. And, and and uh, anyway, I I don't want to spoil it. So look, we got all sorts of stuff to talk about this week. Like I mentioned before, we officially started. We got to talk about Apple's M1 because this thing is an unbelievable piece of silicon. Silicon. It's a monster. It is way beyond my wildest expectations. To be honest with you, I know we kind of alluded to its performance capabilities, and I knew that it was going to be powerful but I didn't expect it to be this powerful. And I knew, I started getting excited when I started reading how excited Anon Tech was getting for it. <laughs> I was like, these guys write about CPUs for a living and they've been around for like 20 years. In fact, didn't Anon Tech, didn't their founder go to Apple? Do you guys remember that? Didn't they hire Anon from Anon Tech? Oh, that's right. To yeah. go to Apple. Did he so, go to Apple? I'm pretty sure that he's still there. If someone in the huh. chat could... Uh, can uh, pull that up. Can you guys be my Jamie? People in the chat, can I just be like, hey, chat, pull that up? <laughs> can you guys do that? <laughs> That'd be great. Hey, chat, pull that up. Yeah, Anon from Anon Tech got hired by Apple. The guy knows everything about CPUs, GPUs, silicon, silicon, silicone, I hear. And, and they hired him, and their site was praising the M1 chip, and I was just reading all the performance specs. So anyway, we'll, we'll talk all about that. we got lots to say about that. We'll talk about the new... Uh, MacBook Air, the new MacBook Pro. We've got some stuff to say about the new Mac Mini. And we'll talk about HomePod Mini reviews because those are in. I've got two HomePod Minis on the way. I think they get here next week sometime. I'm not sure when they get here. But uh, I pre-ordered two. And if you stay tuned till the end, I'm going to be giving you guys a, uh, a recap. of. I just released a video on my channel. It's going crazy, actually, by the way. I'll, I'll put a link to it in the show notes. If you want to check it out, let me see. Can I can I pull this up in browser mode? I'll just pull this up right here. I'm going into browser mode, guys. Deep Ooh. into browser mode. Here we go. This is my new HomePods plus Apple TV plus Dolby Atmos. Wow. <laughs> Video. <laughs> That's literally the title. And that was literally how I felt. Uh, it the, the Atmos experience on HomePod was just added last week. And if you have HomePods already, you're in for... A spectacular treat, a aural delight. It's gonna be, it's gonna be crazy. Uh, the difference in audio performance you're gonna get on your TV, and I'll talk about that at the end of the show. Let's see here. Before we dive in, let me give a thank you to Netgear just real fast. Netgear, tis the season to upgrade your Wi-Fi when you're connected. To your world by Wi-Fi, be sure it's the best. Orbi Wi-Fi 6 from Netgear is the gift that keeps on giving. Covers your entire home with the fastest Wi-Fi so you can stream your favorite shows and movies 
video chat with family far away and work and learn from home on more devices than ever before in any part of your house. It's Wi-Fi worth celebrating. Ah, Lewis, I forgot to get the party poppers. I need to do that for next time. Come Uh, on, man. I know. I missed opportunity again. Don't miss this holiday season's exclusive offers on the best Wi-Fi ever. Find out what makes Netgear America's number one choice for Wi-Fi at netgear.com slash best Wi-Fi. That's netgear.com slash best Wi-Fi. Leander was just saying before we started how much he's trying to get his little paws, his little mitts on those Orbi on those Orbi mesh routers because you do you have an Orbi currently? You just want the new Orbi, right, Leander? Yeah, I want the new one. Yeah, I'm using I'm using an you older the five? one now. It's it's two or three years old. Uh, I'm I don't remember to be honest. Mm. It's it's probably like three years old now, three four years old. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's great. It's a great great system. Um, and it was the first generation of the Orbi, so how old that is. But yeah, I'd like to update it to the six for sure. Wi-Fi six. <sighs> Wi-Fi six. How's that, Lewis? <laughs> Sounds awesome. Give me a six, Lewis. Come on, just throw a one six my way. I don't have any water, man. I, I realize you got up here without water. I, I can barely talk, let alone scream. You never want to give me a six. Six. Oh, <laughs> oh my god! It's that terrible. Like a strangled cat. <laughs> <laughs> you never, never felt so thirsty as when you realize you don't have any water. You, you're my Davy Lee Roth, and I keep tossing this stuff to you, and you, you just keep choking. <laughs> My goodness, we need to get you in some leather pantaloons so that you could really hit those high notes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> How long has it been since you've worn leather pants, Lewis? Be honest. Months? Two months? It's been uh, since last September at the Oktoberfest. You wore the Well, those don't count, though, because those were later hosen, right? Not, I mean, not last October, a year ago. I mean, oh, Oktoberfest was just killed by COVID this year. Yeah, well, killed everything, right? God. Okay, let's not bum everyone out, okay? Um, By the way, I think we're going to do a special announcement. I think today is the day, and I'm sorry to spring this on everyone. I, I, we've been working on something, and I think it's time to reveal it, this show. And I hope it's something that you all are going to like. And I think we'll probably do that halfway through the show. This is kind of impromptu. I was like, I've been, I've been hesitating to announce this. And I feel, I feel like it's finally just ready to roll. So we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Uh, before we – well, we already did the uh, Netgear spots. So let's just dive right in here. Leander. Let's talk about Apple's M1 because it's a monster. A monster. <laughs> monster. <laughs> well, the M1 or the performance trajectory? Because that actually didn't involve the M1. Okay, well, let's start with the, the performance trajectory then. All right, so I'm talking about Anantec. Anantec did a deep dive into the A14, which is the chip that currently powers the, um, the, uh, the iPhone 12 and the uh, new iPad Air. And of course, it's very similar to the M1. Um, It's sort of a a precursor. So they looked at the performance and they found that there's a massive three times performance jump in the last five years, three times. Uh, Compare that to Intel, their best single thread performance only proved 30% that time, 28%. So, you know, Apple's, and they have this graph they have, I'm showing it's, it right now, our Leander. It's on this crazy trajectory that the chips, um, you know, just heading straight up and at this uh, at a steep, steep angle in terms of performance. You know, while everything else is sort of stagnating. Um, and it just shows, I mean, why Apple made this, you know, somewhat risky jump from Intel to Apple Silicon. You know, I- Intel is stagnating; they're just not getting anywhere. And you know, uh, the, these these the Apple's chips, meanwhile, are going to be going, you know, like like bonkers. Um, so it compared the Apple A9 chip of 2015 to the current A14, and they note, quote, Apple's performance trajectory is un- and unquestioned execution over these years is what has made Apple Silicon a reality today. Anybody looking at the absurdness of the graph showing the comparison will realize that there was simply no other choice for Apple to ditch Intel and x86 in favor of their own in-house microarchitecture. Something par for the course would have meant stagnation and worse consumer com- products, end quote. Uh, and this was written before Jesus announced on the M1. So this is like just, you know, with the A14. Yeah. <laughs> what, reading that, that paragraph and talking about how... So I guess in my mind, one of the reasons that Apple was moving on to their own chips was because they wanted to have horizontal integration, right? They wanted to be c- in control of all the, com- the major components for, for their computers. And 
didn't you say a while back, Leander, like this is one of Tim Cook's strategies is to own the core aspects of their technology? Well, this is that was the Tim uh, Steve Cook, uh, Steve Cook, Steve, Steve, <laughs> Tim Jobs, Steve Cook. That's Tim Jobs. This yeah, is, <laughs> this is um, Steve Jobs. I'm saying, you know, they want to they want to own the the core technology and whatever they're doing. So, uh, yeah, you know, it's been kind of surprising that. Uh, uh, well, you know, I, building chips, I don't think is no, it, it's not no, no small feat, especially desktop chips. Um, and um, you know, they've they've got ten years of this experience under their belt now. Um, and it, you know, it's just showing it's really paying off. You know, app, uh, into, and people are saying, I mean, there's all kinds of crazy speculation yesterday saying that um, with chips this powerful and this this low power, you know, Apple could be in the data center business. I mean, this is the kind of these are the kind of chips that data centers want because it keeps down their 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 um, you know electricity, the 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 um, power and the heating. Uh, and data centers is so gigantic, you know, that, that low power, high performance chips like these, you know, are highly sought after. So it's not just for mobile. I mean, it could th these chips could even be used in data centers, possibly if Apple ever wants to go into that business, which I thought was super fascinating. Um, and then, you know, like once you, and these are, these are, this is only at 18 watts too. I mean, this is like, these, these are sort of, uh, the, the, the A14, you know, is a, is a, is um, a low power chip. Once you start sticking, chips like these into into higher power machines like a desktop where you could run a hundred watts through it you know when you cool it i mean you're looking at crazy crazy performance you know it's super exciting i think i mean i don't think anyone saw this coming and in fact there's a really interesting uh, uh interview with the independent that just came out just a few minutes ago with craig federighi you know the head of software at, at apple admitting that they didn't they didn't even know that they were going to have these these kind of numbers he said when they came back it was like you know, the battery life numbers, which are also amazing. Um, you know, he didn't believe it. And he was like, what happened? I thought we had people who knew how to predict this kind of stuff. You know, it was so off the charts that their own project, it exceeded their own projections. Yeah, so it's crazy. I mean, it's amazing, amazing uh, stuff they're doing. Yeah, I, I just, I just want to add. So uh, when I first heard what Apple was doing, I was thinking this was a manufacturing move, right? But let me show you guys this graph. <laughs> let me show you guys this graph. This is a single thread Geekbench 5 comparison chart comparing the A14. So again, this is before the M1 was announced to the AMD Ryzen 9 5950X. So this is one of AMD's re most recent, most powerful chips. Look at that performance. Look at that performance. Hold on, get your Band-Aids ready. Are you looking? Are we in browser mode? Yes. Let me just show you let me just show you what happened to the nips when I saw this for the first time. You see that? What the? <laughs> what the oh heck? My God. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, boy. Let me just put it this way. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and hold my hands right here. No, jokes aside, the A14, which is supposed to be a, a mobile chip, is second only to AM, one of AMD's most powerful chips, okay? Now, check this out. Apple Silicon a M1 chip in the MacBook Air, in the MacBook Air, passively cooled MacBook Air, outperforms the high-end 16-inch MacBook Pro. <laughs> the Geekbench 5 score is 1687 for the MacBook Air which I'll pull up numbers in a sec, and the multi-core score is 7433, which is just wild. So let me dive into this Mac Rumors story. The M1, the M1 chip, which belongs to a MacBook Air with 4 gigs of RAM, or excuse me, 8 gigs of RAM, features a single-core score of 1687 and a multi-core score of 7433. Uh, that's with a 3.2 gigahertz base frequency. In comparison to Macs, that single-core performance is better than any other available Mac. And the multi-core performance beats out all of the 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro models, including the very expensive, I think I spent $3,400 on this model, the 10th generation high-end 2.4 gigahertz Intel Core i9 model. That is how, it, I, I, <laughs> that's how absurdly powerful these chips are. Now, I should caveat all this with this, this, this is just CPU performance, right? So there are other elements involved in a computer that, that contribute to performance. And there could be 
other ways that the 16-inch MacBook Pro is going to beat out a MacBook Air. Clearly, GPU is probably going to be one of them. But this is with a passively cooled M1 chip in the MacBook Air. Imagine how much faster it's going to be in the Mac Mini, which has a fan blowing on it, where they could crank up the voltage, crank up the heat, but they're actively cooling it. Imagine what they're going to do with a 16-inch MacBook Pro. Now, I don't think the 16-inch MacBook Pro is going to get the M1. It's probably going to have some variant of it, like the M1T or the M1X or something like that. But if the MacBook Air is already faster than 16-inch 16 16-inch 16 MacBook Pro, if its single-core performance is already faster than the 5950X, the AMD powerhouse, I just think that the future is looking very nice for the 16-inch MacBook Pro. In fact, to be honest, it's kind of hard to believe the numbers that we're seeing. I, it, I, I don't even know what to make of them because <laughs> I think all of us were expecting these chips to be faster. And to be honest, I was expecting the chip to be on par with a 16-inch MacBook Pro performance, but not to beat it in basically all capacities in their lowest performing Mac. That, that I was not expecting. I was expecting it from the Mac Mini. I was not expecting it from the MacBook Air that is passively cooled. So we're in for a wild ride, and I hope you all have plenty of Band-Aids in your medicine cabinets. If not, you better stock up because we're going to need some rhinoplasty after this ride is over. Lewis, I hear you over there giggling. Is there anything that you want to add to any of these uh, sentiments? No, I mean, it's just... It, it, It'll be interesting to see uh, what actually happens when people get these things in their hands, right? I mean, it, Apple always makes these things sound amazing, and it, it really – I mean, I was re-watching that, and I was just going, God, what? You know, it's just a barrage of better than – you know, two times better, all these times better, you know, blah, blah, everything better, 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 better. It's astonishing, and I, I, I just I, – I really wonder how it will actually work. You know, I mean, they say everything's great. Probably will be, but – I don't know. Yeah, but th these are not Apple's numbers. This is a non-tech doing Geekbench 5 tests and <laughs> showing you the results of an A14. This is not even the M1. This is the M14. Oh, right. You know, it's like... Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I mean, we've, we've been talking about how these chips are better for ages, right? I mean, that they're how, how impressive their mobile chips are all, all, over and over and over. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I, I just I, I I can't hardly wrap my head around some of that stuff they were talking about the other day. It's, it's like so far beyond what I would ever even need to use a computer for. It's uh, <laughs> it just sounds amazing. I should mention, Lander. I just caught myself talking about <gasps> a picture that we didn't describe. So this Geekbench five image that we're looking at, it has the Ryzen nine fifty nine fifty X at the very top, and its score is sixteen fifty five, and right below it. Almost in the same level of performance is the Apple A14, and its score is a 1603. So 1655 for a massively powerful desk, desktop-grade machine is only slightly faster in the single-threaded Geekbench 5 test than the A14. So imagine what is going to happen with the M1. It's just going to be... It's going to be totally insane. I, I can't wait to see what the benchmarks are next week. And in fact, I was thinking... If you're going to be editing video, you might just be better off getting the Mac Mini now because the problem with the last Mac Mini was its graphics card was absolutely terrible, like a, a huge embarrassment. But the new GPU that's built into the, into the SoC system on a chip in the M1 looks like it actually might be pretty good. And it's going to be fully fine-tuned for Final Cut Pro performance. So for seventeen hundred dollars, which is a which is what a or eighteen hundred dollars, which is what a spec'd out MacBook or a, a Mac Mini costs, you could get a machine that outperforms in many capacities the thirty five hundred dollar sixteen inch MacBook Pro. So if you don't need the portability, it seems like you might be better off just getting the Mac Mini. Or if you want something that is an absolute insane powerhouse, waiting for the sixteen inch MacBook Pro. But remember, they said on stage that you'll be able to edit 8K video, 8K video on the MacBook Air without dropping a frame in DaVinci Resolve, which is a program that is not going to be as optimized as the as Final Cut Pro is. So, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. 
I don't even know what to say. I, I, I just I think all of us expected either great battery life, decent performance, or great performance, markedly improved battery life. But Leander, let me send it back to you because it seems like we're getting the best of all worlds here right, with battery exactly. life as well. Well, that was the other thing as well. You know, I think we, we all expected it to be fast, but not this fast. And we all expected better battery life, but not, you know, as good, as great battery life as they t- were talking about uh, at the event on Tuesday. So, I mean, that, that for me was like one of the, the things that really stood out with those numbers on the battery life. So, um, you know, during the one more thing keynote, uh, you know, they, 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 they put us in truly eye-popping battery life numbers. Um, you know, the new MacBook Air, for example, can run up to 15 hours while browsing the web wirelessly and up to 18 hours while playing videos. Um, if you compare that to the previous year, that was 11 hours for uh, web browsing and 12 hours when watching movies. So that's like, the, you know, for watching movies, that's another six hours of battery life. That's almost a full working day of battery life. I thought that was really, really surprising. Like I thought there was going to be, you know, maybe two or three more hours of battery life or something like that. But like six hours, I thought it was crazy, crazy. And the same thing is true for the MacBook Pro. Uh, and that's even better because it's got a bigger battery. So the new MacBook Pro's battery will run up to 17 hours when web browsing and up to 20 hours when playing video. The previous generation MacBook Pro run up to 10 hours while browsing the web and 10 hours when watching movies. So that's a, uh, an, a, an improvement of seven hours and 10 hours respectively, which I think it just, you know, are crazy, crazy numbers. Yeah. Uh, I saw someone say something like, it is almost as if Apple came up with some kind of crazy new battery technology because they're basically giving you 50% better battery life. And I'm... <laughs> How how do you conjure up fifty percent better battery life with one update? That's unheard of. No one is no one is capable of doing that. And Apple now is giving you a machine that is extraordinarily more powerful than the last generation of machines, while also almost doubling your battery battery life in some instances. Like for the MacBook Pro, going from ten hours of video watch time to twenty, or going from what's the number here? Uh, 10 hours of web browsing to 15 or something. So you're getting insane performance improvements and ridiculous battery life improvements. Like the more I read about this kind of stuff, the more I think to myself, this almost seems too good to be true. Am I right? I mean, it seems like it's not even real. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. 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 Yeah. I thought so too. And you know, and I think the optimizations are just beginning, you know I mean? Cause they have, there's not even an OLED screen um you know there's i'm not sure what other components could be improved but the screen i think you know is one of the biggest drawers and you know if they move it to an oled screen you'll get even better battery life out of it yeah that would be that would be (laughs) if you got an oled screen too that would be a preposterous preposterous computer right there uh sorry i'm trying to post stuff in the chat for these benchmarks because people are like not believing this. Yeah, I'm, I'm multitasking, trying to give people these benchmarks that we were just showing because they pretty much tell the whole story. And I'll, of course, post links to all this stuff in the show notes. So if you guys want to check out the benchmarks, everything will uh, everything will be there. And uh, I would say my only disappointment then with the new Macs are the cameras didn't get upgraded. You still get the same ridiculous 720p webcams <laughs> Although, did they say that they're going to be using some computational magic, computational H- HDR perhaps, to improve the way the camera looks and performs? Because that definitely needs a huge upgrade. Did you guys Did you guys catch that? Yeah, it said something about uh, some ML stuff uh, uh, making it better. I, I, I definitely remember them saying that, uh, but I don't remember exactly what they were promising. Just better FaceTime. <laughs> okay, well, they did it with the iPhone SE, the new iPhone SE, because it has the same camera as the iPhone 8, and yet it looks like a completely different camera module. So mm. hopefully they're, they're able to work some of that stuff into, uh, into the new Macs because the cameras are really pretty sad. Like the FaceTime cameras, <laughs> they are so bad. They're so dark. When, was it, when, was you, when did you, uh, you know, like, the, you know, use it though, really for anything except for like, you know, a Zoom call or whatever. I mean, like, you know, I don't, it doesn't, for me, I, the reason I, I don't remember is that I paid no attention at all. I mean, <laughs> like on, on the, on the list of things you're, you're going to care about the camera, I don't know, for me, it's like super low. 
Yeah, but camera plays a huge role these days with everyone doing everything on Zoom. And anytime I use the camera, especially if it's not in the middle of the day, it's like I'm broadcasting from a Siberian prison cell. You know, it's like dark and there's like grain <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> it's like it's like flashing. It looks like I'm being lit by a one single candle. It looks so bad. Jeez. It's one try of the using a, try using an old PC, man. I, I popped open an old HP laptop the other day and I, I was looking at it. It's like, I can't, I can't believe how primitive it all seemed. I, I just like, is it worse than the Mac? Cause I, Oh my God. I find that hard to believe. It's terrible. <laughs> terrible. Uh, I was shocked. Absolutely shocked. It made me realize just how used I am to everything being kind of good. And then to hear them talking about how great these new ones are, I'm like, I'm kind of going, geez, I kind of like to get one, but I, I, I mean, really, do I need one? Well, that that that's a great. I wish I did. That's a great segue there, Lewis. Is anyone buying any of this stuff? Because I'm I'm on the fence. I I feel like if they would have announced a 16 inch MacBook Pro, boom, over, done. I'm getting it. <laughs> I am tempted to get the Mac Mini because I I think it is going to be a better performer than my current 16 inch MacBook Pro, which makes me sad to say. <laughs> but did you spend how much money on? <laughs> oh, dude, I think I spent thirty four hundred dollars. Maybe it was less. Was I can't remember was if this... that was the pre discount p- price or the pro discount price because I got a discount on it because one of our uh, wonderful listeners connected me with their discount, which I I am very grateful for. And we've had uh, I've had discounts <laughs> before, so I really have to pay full price these days. That was a, that's a twenty percent discount, right? So like six twenty five percent, twenty five percent. Is it really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're looking at this is a, you know. Possibly a four thousand dollar machine. It might have been a four thousand dollar machine that I got for like thirty three hundred. I can't remember what the price was. Uh, yeah. I'd have to look but this that is, up. And this was when? How long ago? Was this early this year? Or a year and a half year? ago. Okay. Year and a half. Actually, no. It was. Uh, it was last October. Can you believe that? I bought my machine last October, and it already feels like it's massively outdated. <laughs> well, it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it is now. Yeah, jeez. It yeah, sure pretty is. soon the uh, the iPad is going to be outperforming my 16-inch MacBook Pro. Once they put these <laughs> chips in, it's like a friggin' iPad, really? Friggin' iPad to the outperform my $3,400 <laughs> MacBook Pro? That's enough to... Uh, that's well, enough it's good to news for all set. of us, though, isn't it? I mean, you know, like, this is why we love Apple, isn't it? I mean, because, you, know, uh, you know, who else is making these kind of gains and these kind of improvements across the line? And the Mac, I mean, the Mac is like, it's only what... Uh, is it 10% or 15% of their revenue now? Something like that. Yeah, I think it was 12 the last time I looked. Yeah, it's you know it's not even one of their major product lines. And then you have these kind of crazy improvements. But you know this is because of all the work they put in over these years into all you know into into the, the chips for the for the iPhone and and the iPad. Uh, this is this is paying off, isn't it? You know for the Mac now, which is great great news. It's exciting for sure. It's. An exciting time to be an Apple the fan. Is, I, I, yeah. And just seeing how excited a non tech is, just to take it back to that. Well, those guys are super technical. And seeing how they were geeking out about it made me way yeah. more excited than I actually was. Sorry, oh, Linda, what were you going to say? Well, yeah, when those numbers came out sort of y- y- late yesterday afternoon, Twitter just went mental. I mean, there was all sorts of people, like, you know, getting just losing it over these numbers because. Uh, that you know they're so far they 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 exceeded I think what everyone was expecting even after the Tuesday's keynote you know I don't think people were really prepared for like how how high these numbers are. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't emotionally prepared at all, which is why I I feel like I've just been sitting here rambling for the last fifteen minutes because I feel like I just got slapped in the face. I don't even know what to say. I'm I'm completely stunned by these numbers. They seem like well, they're, they're too good to be true, and I wouldn't believe them honestly if it weren't for the fact that Anantech and other people were were doing benchmarks and showing you from a objective perspective what they think is happening sorry leander go ahead no, it, uh, you know uh, one of the things i was wondering about is like are they, can we trust the benchmarks you know what i mean are they is it really a good test because I, I know in the past I, I haven't done a story on this for years like i haven't done stories about chips forever but you know years and years ago when i was at wide i remember doing a story about a ben, uh, a new, I think it was Geekbench, and it was, you know, maybe it was Geekbench 2 or Geekbench 3. It wasn't doing proper tests on certain chips. There was a big controversy about this because people were reporting these numbers and they were like out of line. And it was like, oh, it's because of the benchmark, you know, like it's, it's multi core, whatever, you know, whatever it was, the, whatever test it performed, it wasn't doing it correctly. So this is what made me, that was a, one of the first things I thought was like, you know, uh, it, uh, it's, can we trust these numbers? Like, can we trust the benchmark to be doing a really good test of this new chip? 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and and I, I, I agree with you there. I mean, we'll, we'll have to wait and see what happens. And I want to see the real-world tests when people start getting their hands on these machines. I think the benchmarks are a very good indication of what we can expect. I don't think that they are the gold standard of what the machines will be capable of doing. And like I mentioned before, the single-core and multi-core Geekbench 5 benchmarks are one measurement of performance there are a lot of things that go into the overall performance of the computer like does it have a t2 chip or not like because the t2 chip helps with video encoding so there's just like a lot of stuff that's that's going to be packed in there that will contribute to performance now the one thing i will say that i was a little disappointed by was the limited io on these on these machines which seems to be a limitation of the m1 system on a chip and the fact that you can only max out at 16 gigs of ram what is this 1986 (laughs) <laughs> 16 gigs of RAM? That's it? So, And yeah. only two terabytes of storage. You can't even go up higher than that. So there are limitations. Oh, and the fact that they're, they're basically the, the entire computer now lives on the M1 chip. It used to be dispersed all over the motherboard, and now it's all literally in that one square. And that includes the RAM. So the RAM is a part of the M1 chip now. You can't upgrade the RAM on anything. And, and that means um, unless they surprise us and do something different with the new Mac Pro or whatever else they, ru- they, they integrate this technology into, that RAM is there. You can't change it, including the iMacs because the iMac has user expandable RAM right now, which is great because Apple's RAM upgrades are very expensive. And that's one of the things that people don't like about Apple hardware. Well, if they put the M1 or the M1X or whatever into the iMac, so long user upgradable RAM upgrades, you're going to have to buy the RAM that you want from Apple, I think. And that's going to be a big slap right across your wallet, your wallet <laughs> and your buns. And well, either your wallet or your buns are going to like it. I mean, in a way, you know, isn't that one less thing to worry about? You know, I mean, people, <laughs> uh, I saw some discussion about this. I love the way you think. <laughs> well, <laughs> and that's a feature. I know I'm betting up a backwards here to, to, to defend Apple, but... <laughs> You know, there was some discussion about this on Twitter yesterday. People saying that you know, it, it it's like, you know, take that out of the equation. Don't let, don't let even people think about it. You know, like they don't sell the iPhone on the on the speed of the chip, do they? I mean, people used to buy computer devices like on the megahertz of the chip, or you know, how much RAM it had, or whatever. All these different geeky specs. And you haven't bought an iPhone for, you know, when, when was it, when did you ever look at the chip on the iPhone? And you looked at its, you know, its its megahertz numbers, and and that, you know, helps sway your decision, or even the amount of RAM it contained. I mean, I know people do dis- do do discuss this every year, but I have no idea how much RAM my phone has got, and I don't care. You know, <laughs> it works. It, it, I think it's better for Apple to make, you know, it for someone to make that. It, it's kind of nice for someone to make that decision to say, okay, 16 gigs is enough, and maybe that may not be true. We'll see. Um, cause I'm like you, I, you know, like I've got about 200 tabs open. I need that Ram. I need 32 <laughs> gigs, you know, to, to, to keep my machine running. But, uh, in, in the future, maybe this is something that we won't even have to worry about. And, th- and that would be, I think a good thing if so. Well, that's a common theme I hear from people. In fact, I'm looking at the chat and some of the people are just saying that right now. Well, maybe the man, the Ram will be managed so well that you won't, you just won't need 32 gigabytes. <laughs> right. <laughs> I like the way you guys think turning we'll a negative say, into we'll a positive. Say. And shout out to my dear close personal friend, Zach Hicks, who has the best abs of any of our listeners. That's that's proof. He sent me a picture, and I can guarantee you that. Whoa. Whoa. Fantastic abs, Whoa. Zach Hicks. And he says, just like iPhones don't need the high RAM requirements of, and- of Android, with Apple's tight control of 16 gigabytes RAM, might equal 32, maybe even 64 gigabytes of RAM on Intel systems. So Apple's just going to manage it so well. You don't need more than 16. I, I, I guarantee you that's going to be Apple's take, too. They're like, why would you need more than 16? We manage it like it's 64. Anyway, we've gone on and on and on and on about the M1, and, and there's more to say. And there we could do a whole extra show just on this topic, but it's exciting. It's very exciting, and this was far more titillating than I was expecting it to be. So we'll see what happens with the benchmarks next week, and we'll have to take it from there. And then hopefully we'll get some news on the new uh, 16-inch MacBook Pro sometime soon because I was going to buy a 4K TV, and many people on YouTube have been making fun of me because of my TV choice because my TV looks like it's from 1998. And in fact, it's not uh, <laughs> It's not that much later than that. <laughs> but 
I might take that 4K TV money and just save it and buy a new MacBook Pro because the 16 inch is going to be an absolute destroyer of worlds, I think, when they finally <laughs> reveal what's in that. Uh, okay, before we move on, we're going to talk about HomePod mini reviews. And I want to tell you guys my HomePod uh, Dolby Atmos Apple TV story because it's a, some call it the perfect trio. The holy trinity it's not quite holy but it's gonna make you feel like you're in heaven <laughs> oh did you guys like that oh my gosh i'm out of control let me tell you a little something about well let me tell you about a little project that we've been working on for quite a while it's finally here many of you have asked for it some have called it tremendous it's a new way for you all to support us this is something that i've had people ask me about for two years probably and we didn't really know how it was going to work and I was hesitant to do it but I feel like this is going to help take Coltcast to the next level. There's a lot of things that we want to do and if you all would be willing to support us it would be tremendously helpful. So we're launching a Coltcast Patreon. There's also a subscribe star and I can put links to the uh, both sites in the show notes. But if you would just give me 60 to 90 seconds, just talk about this real fast. I'll tell you about what we're going to be giving, giving is like tier gifts for people who choose to support the, uh, the show. Like for people who cry. What's that? For people who cry. Why would anyone cry about tier, this? Tier gifts? Oh. <laughs> <Lewis Wallace. laughs> that was good, Lewis. So let me just touch on this real fast. At the supporter level, so we have three levels. The supporter, the producer, the high-powered executive. And at all the different tiers, I'm going to be launching a new podcast that you'll get access to called Cultcast Off Topic, which is going to be a new weekly audio show. We might do video eventually, but we're going to start it off as audio, where I basically just do a podcast talking about my favorite tech topics, Apple topics, interesting topics every single week. And it's going to be me, probably a revolving series of different people. I'm sure eventually El Caney will make an appearance, maybe Lewis Wallace, talking about stuff that we often don't get to on the cult cast or diving in deeper to topics that maybe we kind of glossed over more on the show. So you get that right off the bat for, for every single tier. We're going to have exclusive Discord broadcasts, exclusive YouTube broadcasts. These will be interactive live shows. Uh, you're going to get very special recognition. If you decide to join the Cult Club, the very exclusive Discord they, that we have available for free for everyone, by the way. You don't have to, uh, to be a supporter to uh, join the Cult Club. It's free. And we welcome you to join, by the way. Uh, but you'll have special recognition for your name in, uh, in the Cult Club so everyone can see that you are thrown in the ducats, helping us move this thing uphill. And then also we'll have supporter exclusive bonus content. So things that we will do like potentially extra segments or maybe even like experimental uh, content that we probably couldn't air on the regular show because, well, it might not be appropriate <laughs> until we polish it up a little bit. So that's at the uh, $6 a month tier. And let me just back up and say, I feel like for people who decide to support the show, you're not going to get what you're paying for, right? So your money <laughs> is not going to, you're not going to get more than you're spending. It's more of you like what we do. You want to see us do more of it. You want to help us expand and do more. And so you're going to help support us. And in exchange, we're going to give you some stuff that we hope that you'll like, because I fully admit these tiers are crazy, like $6 a month, $12 a month and $24 a month. It's a lot of money. And I know it's, Everyone's asking for donations these days. And if you decide that you don't want to help, that's totally fine. Nothing is going to change with the cult cast audio podcast. I want to keep this exactly as it is. It's going to remain unchanged. All the content's going to be the same. This is just going to be an addition to this content in case you guys want to help us out and help, help us grow. So at the $12 a month tier, you get all the stuff that I just talked about, but you're going to get some extra special stuff. You're going to get your name in the show notes. We're going to be revolving through different names. So we'll, we'll highlight like three or four or five people at a time in the show notes. And we're going to start talking about 
our supporters on the show. Now, I will say right off the bat, Zach Hicks, he was our number one supporter. He's the only one that's joined. I did a soft launch of this yesterday in the Cult Club, and he's the only one that's joined. So we're going to honor him and honor you all in special ways on the show and probably weave you into the show. We're going to start doing cult calls, which many have told me this is a terrible idea because (laughs) we don't know what's going to happen with this content. So we're going to start randomly calling people for your thoughts about different segments and we'll weave those into the show. That could end up being a total disaster and an absolute train wreck, but we're going to try it out. And the other thing is Cult Club Gadge Garage access so we get to review a lot of stuff i buy a lot of things for review and if you're in this tier i'm going to make that stuff available for free to the members of this tier or for a seriously reduced price if it's something that i paid for you just pay for shipping and i'll just ship it to you so that could be a whole host of stuff uh, routers uh, iphone cases different kinds of technology and with some of this stuff you might get something that's worth way more than what you'd spend on an entire year of support. And I have all this stuff just sitting around and I'm like, what do I do with all this stuff? I don't know what to do. So it just stacks up in piles and, and develops cobwebs. And so I thought this would be a really cool way to thank people who supported us. And last but not least, and I'll wrap up real quick is at the $24 a month level, you're a high powered executive at that point. You're going to get a cult cast artifact. So this will be something that is a token of our gratitude mailed to you once a year on your tier anniversary that I think, I hope, that you'll really cherish. It will be something special that you can't buy. And we'll also have other perks for this tier that we'll be announcing later if you want to help support. This is something that I've been working on for a while. And it's an experiment. We'll see how it goes. But at the very least, you'll get some cult cast, some additional cult cast content. And we're going to start weaving this stuff into the show in many different ways. And I just want to say, for those of you that do decide to support us, because I know many of you have been there, been here since day one, thank you. We are, on, we are at the beginning of a journey. And I feel like this is going to be the beginning of a place. This is going to be the beginning of where we head to next and what we can do next. And you're going to be a critical, critical part of that. And I'm just really grateful for anyone that supports. Shout out to Zach Hicks. He's in the uh, YouTube chat. <laughs> Did you guys hear that? Siri thought I was thanking Siri. And, uh, I thought Zach was somehow talking to you. Through <laughs> 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 Wait a second. Bending, he hacked, hacked exactly. the rules of physics. He ha- hacked into my uh, Apple Watch. <laughs> He's a special guy. Great abs. Great developer. Okay, with that is said... It, is it required that they send a photograph of their abs to be a member of the... I mean, I thought about <laughs> making it a requirement, Lewis, but I'll settle for, like, maybe a picture of your calves. Maybe do some calf lifts, get a snap of those. You don't have to send me a pic, but if you do send me a picture, or if you do send me some information about you, we'll talk about that information on the show. So <laughs> let that be... A bonus and also a warning. Let that be a warning to all of you that uh, we will talk about you on the show. Okay. I think sorry. that took more than 60 to 90 seconds. Yeah, I'm sorry. I went on I went on and on and on about that for way too long. But there's a lot to <laughs> say. So I probably should have caveated it. It was going to take 10 minutes. But let me throw it back to you, Lewis. And let's talk about HomePod Mini because I'm way more than Mini excited about the HomePod. You're maxi excited? Some, some would say I'm maxi pro yeah. excited about the uh, the HomePod. Yeah, so uh, first reviews came out today. You know, the big Im- review embargo lifted, and all these uh, people who had early access to the thing, sounds like most of them had uh, stereo pair. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, and results are pretty – people sound great. They say, they say sound great. Um, punch is way above its weight. It's a, it's, you know, these things are only 3.3 inches high, right? They're like the size of a – softball or something and and basically uh, everything i could read i mean a couple people were saying eh, you know it's it's pretty good it's not as good as the regular home pod well no kidding um but what hi-fi said the home pod mini outperforms its size and price like no other smart speaker you can buy so basically if, if you're gonna pay 100 bucks or less this is they're they're saying this is as good as it gets um I was kind of surprised. People are actually talking about how well Siri works. There's a lot of talk that too. about that. You know, and, and I, 
I, I think what was happening was a lot of people were reviewing this who don't use Siri or, or never never used a HomePod, right? So I, I, I got the feeling like they, they were just impressed that Siri kind of works, you know, and they're like, oh, <laughs> Siri's gotten better since the HomePod came out. So, yeah, it has. I mean, anybody who uses a HomePod knows it's gotten better, right? And they know that these things have awesome microphones and can really pick up and, t and almost to an ex annoying extent pick up what you're asking them, right? So, uh, so here's what um, a little bit more what from what hi <clears throat> excuse me, told you I forgot the water. What what Hi-Fi had to say about it? From the moment we start playing music, it's clear that the HomePod Mini comfortably outperforms the size and price. It goes much louder than expected. Even 75% louder is louder than we imagine most people regularly want to go in an average size living room. No matter how much you push it, the HomePod Mini never shows any sign of strain. It's clean and composed at all times, or at all volumes. I found that kind of surprising. I, it, this is a big question mark for me, is how good this thing is going to sound and, and how loud it's going to be. Mm -hmm. um, it, it really, I mean, honestly, it made me wish I'd bought two, because uh, I think that Two might be nice. <laughs> well, yeah. If you if you're gonna get a HomePod, you gotta get two. You can't just do yeah, one. I only especially own one not of the minis. Yeah, well, uh, <clears throat> people um, made a lot of comments about how it works well with HomeKit, which I think if you have a current HomePod, you're already gonna know that. But uh, one of the things that I I thought was really pretty astute is like, oh, this is a great kind of gateway drug to home kit and home automation right because instead of paying three hundred dollars to start getting into it and using it with voice commands and stuff suddenly you can get into it for a hundred bucks or you can have it in every room for a hundred bucks a pop right so there, there's just a lot of a lot of really kind of surprisingly uh superlative talk about the, the home pod mini people are really kind of across the board liking it. i mean i saw a couple of negative comments but almost universally praised almost universally praised that's what i saw too i think the one comment that was highlighted which is something that i've said about the original home pods a lot is they punch way beyond their size so you see them and you expect them to have a certain level of sound but i've, I've pulled up the perfect part of this web page it has room filling sound <laughs> look at that that was not even <laughs> that was not even on purpose it sounds like it is four to five times larger than it actually is, I think, for the HomePod. And you hear it, and then the bass kicks on, and you're like, whoa, that's far more powerful than it looks like it should be. So I'm expecting that from the HomePod minis as well. I'm not expecting to be wowed by Siri. It's mm -hmm. still Siri. Siri is great for running things on in, in your HomeKit network, right? So turning things off and on, those kinds of controls. It's not going to be any more intelligent than Amazon A-L-E-X-A. <laughs> For sure not. The, the, the Amazon products have an uncanny intelligence. They, you can ask them questions about totally strange things that it shouldn't know, and it will tease out an answer for you, and there's no way that, that HomePod could possibly do that. But I'll tell you what, I've got two HomePod minis on the way, and I've got a bunch of tests that I'm going to be running on these. I'll be comparing them to... The original HomePods, I'll be comparing them in stereo pairs to the original HomePods. We'll get these things connected to the uh, Apple TV and see how they sound there. So lots of content coming up about original HomePods. People seem to be really interested in HomePod content right now. I don't know why. No one cared about the original HomePods, <laughs> but suddenly everyone's excited about HomePod mini. And it seems like maybe because the price is so much lower that yeah, people are... That's, yeah. That's I mean, absolutely. hundred bucks has a lot to do with it. Yeah, it, it almost becomes an impulse buy, right? I mean, uh, and, yeah. and that's why that's why everybody has a, a Echo Dot. You know, I mean, they they were like twenty five dollars, uh, you know, at Christmas or whatever. People buy five of them, send one to everybody they know. I mean, it, it's it's so cheap that it's it's completely worth it. The HomePod comes out at three fifty. It's like wow, that's that's like that's kind of an investment. You know, I mean, you have to get that to yourself. You have to explain it. You know, like make a case to your wife or whatever. You can't just say, oh, yeah, <laughs> or, honey, I bought another $350 speaker. You don't mind, do you? You just hide um, it in your office, right, Leander? <laughs> just hide it. <laughs> a whole huge pile of them over here. <sighs> Somehow yeah. get it classified as like uh, maybe like some kind of like um, 
dial up phone service you know <laughs> it's like so that so that you can just be like oh no 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 that's just uh you know it's like a like a like a call in uh central phone service that's not a home pod and then you get and then you're off the hook right because you get more in trouble for the technology <laughs> i didn't understand that at all <laughs> yeah, never mind i was i was trying to speak and you <laughs> What? I was I was trying to speak it in, in euphemisms since we're a rated PG show. Let's just you know there's certain kind of phone numbers where you could call them and talk to them about certain topics, you know, and oh. maybe you get in less trouble doing that than you would. Tech uh, I see. Buying a speaking yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 home buy, an extra home buy. Yeah, that's all Do I'm trying to say. Yeah, go ahead. Ha- have you checked out the intercom feature yet? I did try the intercom feature on the home pods, and I couldn't get it to work seamlessly. It seemed like it was kind of buggy. But the thing I've noticed about HomePods is that whenever you're going to be setting up new features or if you are trying to create a new stereo pair or unpair them, you basically just have to wipe them. That's the only way to get everything to start working perfectly. Every time I try to do anything with my HomePods, move them off my network onto a new network, pull them out of a stereo pair, both of them freak out, both of them stop working, and then I have to wipe them every single time. So now that's just part of the process. I just wipe them and then that usually fixes all the problems. I haven't tried using intercom since then but that's another powerful feature you'll be able to send messages from your home pod mini to all your other home pods and other apple devices in your network you can also ask where your iphone is and it will ping your iphone i don't know if you guys have ever tried that that's a pretty cool feature and so it has all these little useful features built in and i think the overall consensus that i heard on the minis was if you're already deeply in the apple ecosystem then not only do these have the best sound for their class and for their price, but they are going to enable a bunch of features that you're going to love if you're already in the Apple ecosystem. And I'm all in the Apple ecosystem. I'm not not like 85% and then I got an Android phone or I do have an Echo, but the Echo has been replaced musically with my stereo pair home pods that are now connected to my apple tv and the only reason i leave my echo there is because my kids like to ask it questions and it's way smarter than my home pods are unfortunately like the intelligence there is is great but other than that the home pods are so much more polished they have an element of sound that i have not heard on any other smart speaker they offer a tapestry of sound that is weaved into your content but you can't hear because you just don't have the speakers capable of delivering that content to you. Now, if you have a really expensive soundbar, then maybe you already are hearing that content, but I don't think a lot of people are spending that much money on soundbars. And if you already have the HomePods, they replace your soundbar. So they're doing dual duty now. So not only do you not need your soundbar, but you have an excellent pair of music speakers that you could stream stuff to, and you have two great speakers that you could use for Apple TV, and that leads me to our last story, (laughs) which I lined up perfectly. That was one of our best segues ever. So I did a video on this topic this week, which you can check out. I'll put a link to it in the show notes, but I'll just give you a quick overview of what it's like having HomePods connected to the Apple TV. So for those of you that don't know, Apple added HomePod or Dolby Atmos support to the HomePods. So that this only works if your HomePods have the most recent OS, if your iPhone has the mo- most recent OS, and if your Apple TV has the most Apple TV or the most current TV OS. It's the only it way to get it working. A, What's that? It has to be a 4K, right? Apple and it has TV to be an 4K. Apple TV 4K, right. And your content and your platform have to support Dolby Atmos. So it doesn't work on YouTube because YouTube doesn't support Dolby Atmos as far as I, as far as I can tell. I've searched. But Disney Plus supports it. Netflix, I believe, supports it in much of their content. Uh, there's one other network that I'm forgetting. Oh, <laughs> Apple TV Plus. <laughs> that was <laughs> generally forgot about that one. Uh, but I tried it on Disney Plus, and I watched The Mandalorian, and I gotta say, it brings the content to life in a completely magical way. And this is aside from Dolby Atmos. Okay, we'll we'll talk about Dolby Atmos in just a second, but. It adds a whole. Uh, it, it adds a whole uh, atmosphere of sound that I just was not hearing before, and so blaster fire sounds so much more clear. Footsteps sound more clear when a ship takes off. You can actually hear the nuance of that audio that some audio engineer slaved away on. You'll actually hear all that stuff now, okay? 
And if your content is Dolby Atmos enabled, then it turns that feature on automatically. And then your audio becomes like 3D in nature. So what Dolby Atmos does is it will allow audio to attach to a certain object in a scene of a movie or your content, and it will move the sound around relative to that object. So like if a ship takes off and moves across your screen like that, and then that way, the sound moves across your screen and then it goes over your side. In fact, I had a stunning moment in the Mandalorian trailer, which is in this video that I have on my YouTube channel, where a ship was going past on the screen and then there are these dings that go off and I was like, whoa, the sound was taking place behind me and then moving past me over my left ear, even though I only have two HomePods in front of me next to my TV. Now, from my understanding, this is all thanks to virtualization. So the HomePods are able to virtualize 5.1 and 7.1 surround sound, and they don't usually make things sound like they're coming from behind you because they can't really drive the sound back there because they're in front of you. But they can definitely do it over your shoulders right here, and then the entire soundscape will take place right in front of you. So instead of just hearing the sound over there as it's happening, the sound is moving around you. It's, it's next to you. It's above you. It's next to your ear. It's next to your other ear. It's moving all around. So the blaster fire as it's going out, is going out past you. And the ship is flying past you. And this is all happening thanks to the Dolby Atmos support now on your HomePods sitting in front of your television. So it takes the sound and moves it from over there in front of your TV to an immersive 3D audio experience that is moving all around you and next to you and sometimes, sometimes even behind you. It is a beautiful experience. <laughs> And it just affirms and makes me love the HomePods even more than I already do. And, I, and you all know that I love the HomePods. <laughs> and now I love them even more. So they're in front of my TV full time now. Even aside from Dolby Atmos content, if you have HomePods, just put them in front of your TV and see what happens. Because they will bring life to all of your content. That you, I, I almost promise you, if you don't have a soundbar, you've never heard this before. It adds a nuance and a complexity and a and a newfound atmosphere to the audio and all of your different content. It's, it's, dare I say, it's game-changing. It's a game-changing feature, Lewis. I hear you over there going... <laughs> it just, I, I just, how does it sound with just one? Because I just got the one. Okay, so it does work with one. It oh, does work with one. I can hear the disappointment. I, I haven't, no, hold on now. Now, if you're a poor boy living in a cardboard box down by the river and you only have one home pod, that's fine. There's no judgment here from my side, Lewis. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with being a poor boy the house. <laughs> box liver down by the river. Okay, I know some people that do that, and they're very happy. It does work because it's virtualization, but the magic really happens in stereo pairs. So, And plus, where would you put the home pod? In front of your TV so that your TV's there, and then you have a home pod sticking up like right in the middle? That's All right, that's it. Next time they're on sale at Best Buy for 200 bucks, I'm buying one. Now I will say because there's been I've, I've had a ton of questions about HomePods. This this the Atmos only works on the original HomePods. You can use the HomePod Mini in stereo mode with your Apple TV 4K, but you won't get Atmos. So you're not going to get the surround sound experience. You only get that with the original HomePods. Well, it doesn't have the processing power. Uh, it doesn't have the spatial awareness. The, uh, the the HomePod Minis don't have spatial awareness, so they're not able to tell what's going on spatially. I guess whereas the original HomePods are. And the original HomePods, I'm going to go ahead and venture a guess. They're going to be way more powerful <laughs> than, the, than the minis are. <laughs> That's the other thing. So HomePod minis, or excuse me, HomePods. <laughs> I have a big living room, a big living room, okay? I have high ceilings. My living room is long and kind of wide. It's probably like 30 feet long and maybe like 15 or 16 feet wide, maybe 20 feet wide. I haven't measured it. And I thought that the HomePods would, would not be able to fill the whole room with sound. But I have never churned the HomePods up past halfway in stereo pair mode because they're so dang loud. And they have so much, they have so much boom, too. Like, in some movies, if they take advantage of the boom, the HomePods will shock you with how much thunder they will bring to your room. They really pack a lot of bass. And when something takes advantage of the HomePod bass... It's truly surprising how much bass can pour out of them. So is it the best sound experience I've ever heard? No, but it's among the best I've ever heard. And I'm not an audiophile. I don't have a 
$5,000 stereo system. I mean, I'm just connecting my HomePods to my Apple TV 4K, and this all works via Wi-Fi. You don't have to plug any wires in anywhere. That's the other unbelievable part about this. You don't have to string wires everywhere. It's just, it's just a wireless, a beautiful wireless audio experience. And I think, eventually, I hope, that Apple is going to enable you to add more HomePods. So right now, it only works with a stereo pair. You can't add more than two. But what if Apple lets you add five and they let you put three behind you? You don't have to add wires everywhere. You can just have the speakers back there, the speakers in front of you, and you'll have a unbelievable movie theater experience level audio. I feel like I've just been dribbling on and on and on about this for the last 20 minutes. <laughs> Where'd you get that idea? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I just... I love the home pods. I love them before, and this just took my love to a whole new level. Like in fact, I wasn't going to say this, but I unplug them at night and I bring them into my bedroom with me. <laughs> and I just, them in the bag. I just hold them like this all night long. Yeah. Because the audio experience is just that good. So, there's my review. Do check out my video because let's be honest, I could use the clicks. I'll put a link to that in the uh, actually I'll put a link to that in the chat if you guys want to check it out. And it'll also be in the show notes if you guys uh, haven't checked it out. Any thoughts on HomePods, guys, before we go ahead and wrap it up? I think that's it. I think that's all the content we have today. How can it be? Yeah? Nothing? Wow. Are we just going to sit here in absolute quietness for the next? Yeah, <laughs> silence, yeah. Got a minute of silence. Pulled the, uh, pulled the old iPhone trick with the Mac. My, my Mac just seems slower than it ever has. Yeah. It's time to wipe it, Lewis. <laughs> time to trade it in. They need a Mac upgrade program. Get a new one every year. If, oh, I mean, man. can you imagine if they if they do with these chips what they've done with the uh, the mobile ones, and they just get better and better every year? And every year you're just like, oh, actually, I percent faster. I would be interested in a Mac upgrade program. Wouldn't you? If you could I, buy a Mac and just turn it in every year, because I always want to have the fastest Mac. That's actually. I don't I, think Tim Cook has already put that in play. I bet you they're going to do that. Although, how much will the payments be every month, you know? That's that's the real question. I, I mean, the MacBook Air costs less than an iPhone. That's actually not a bad point. <laughs> <laughs> how weird is that? The MacBook Air now costs less than the iPhone. And its what specs the? are just about as high as the Mac Pro on that one benchmark thing. I mean, obviously, it's not going to be yeah. that, but yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Eight, it, it, nine ninety nine, eight ninety nine. If you're a student or a teacher, yeah, that's a really interesting point. You just kind of blew my gourd open. I'm stunned. I've got Whoa. nothing left to say. Get out the duct tape. <laughs> I've got the duct tape over here. I have to piece it back together. Well, <laughs> if that's it, I think we should go ahead and wrap it up there, guys, because we're petering out big time. There's nothing else. That's it. That's all the content we have for you guys this week. But hey, if you want to come say hi, we're all on Twitter. I'm at Airfon, E R F O N. Lewis is at Lewis Wallace. Leander is at L Kinney. You can also join us in the Cult Club. I'll put a uh, link to that in the show notes. That this has been the Cult Cast, the best 30 plus minute op conversation you're going to hear all week long. New episodes of the Cult Cast come out every Thursday night. I want to thank everyone for listening, and we'll see you guys. Mm, next time. And we're clear. Don't say we're still broadcasting though, Lewis. Oh, it's a, Don't say it, Lewis. <laughs> Don't say it. Wait. I muted it. Don't worry. Oh my gosh. Thank thank goodness I caught that.